know, over the past several years, attention has been drawn to the radiation dose in CT. And unfortunately, there have been some highly publicized incidents which have not shed a very good light on uh, CT, particularly with radiation dose. And it's not all undeserved, but at the same time, it has created a lot of angst, if you will, from the general public. And so it's brought some attention to it. And as such, uh, there are several governmental agencies and certain states that now require the reporting of radiation dose estimate from CTs on the actual dictated report and also require that the sites monitor this radiation dose and also uh, make sure through continuing education and through quality assurance programs that the radiation dose is being held to a reasonable level. Now to get started with this, I want to review some principles of basic x-ray production. Recall that from an x-ray tube, we have a thing that relates to the tube current, which is in milliamperes. And if you think about it, this is the number of x-ray photons. So if we increase the MA, we increase the number of x-ray photons that are being generated by the x-ray tube. We also have a control parameter, operator selectable parameter, which is the time of exposure, which is in seconds. And generally with CT, this has to do with the amount of time we're making an exposure relative to the tube rotation around the patient in the gantry. Then we also have the kilovolts peak, or KVP, which is a reflection of the energy of the X-ray photons. The higher the KVP, the greater the energy of these photons that we're producing from the X-ray tube. And it's important to remember that all of these parameters, the, the tube current in milliamps in MA, the exposure time in seconds, and sometimes you know those are reported together as MAS, milliampers per second, and